for that one train. And in. we are live. Well, I'm going to cut off Stone Guy for a change. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Sorry for the late start, but... Doesn't show hey. live on my screen. Trust me, it says live on my end. Yeah. I'm sorry I had to watch the end of the Wisconsin Badgers Oregon Ducks game because it was a really, really good game, and I'm a Wisconsin fan, so... Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, gun storage here tonight, and we're going to do introductions here. We got uh, gun websites. Howdy. We got Hawk here. Yo. We got Edge. Hey, I'm hosting this bad boy. Yeah, that's right. We got Dano. If you want to know what Northern Illinois looks like in March, come check out my channel. <laughs> uh, we got Nathan. Make a like a high, make a honey ho, everybody. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Oh, I got that song in my head. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> we got Scotty fun. here. Hey, I'm trying to unload a triple seven two hundred, uh, fifteen million firm. If anybody wants to offer me any money. What the fuck is that? That missing the. Is that the name of the tank top that you're wearing? And then we got Stone Guy. What's happening? And of course me. So G Lux typed in a whole whole bunch of questions here, but my first one really, and we'll start this off pretty easily, is do you guys uh, use a safe for home uh, home storage? A safe or a cabinet, something you can lock your guns up in. Oh God, yes. Yes. So we'll be doing do. this just a quick I, left to right I, here. So I, I plead the fifth. Well, All right, we'll start with you webs again. I do. All right, huh? <laughs> yes. Edge. You can't prove it. Jesus Christ, whose chat is this? <laughs> Quarks. Oops, mine. You why you don't like that question? Not everybody's no, gonna have the same no, no, I'm talking about the list that that G Web's put up for you. I know he's he's got it all worked out. Yeah, so I, I guess appreciate he's it, man. Working, that is, working hard for him. Yeah, he kept G Web's my chat when he's easy. Look at that. I know, right? I should let G Web's run it. I mean, really, that'd be a lot easier. I guess he just feels sorry for you. You're a little handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> he's from all I get. All right, we're at Dano. No. Nathan. Yes. Scotty. Absolutely. Stone guy. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm with the rest of the majority. Yes, I do. You're, you're fired. Yeah, but you gotta let Dano explain that because it's not like he doesn't. Yeah, want that's to exactly. Re that's what exactly what I was gonna do. Dan, do you mind explaining why you don't have a safe? Uh, well, there's there's actually numerous reasons. Uh, one is I have no small children. Uh, I for the vast majority of the year I do live alone. You live in Whitey Hill. No, actually, I don't. That's best with you. And uh, the other issue is uh, I do not own uh, the place where I currently reside, which has to do with uh, the size of what I would want in a safe. I would not be interested in basically a file cabinet. Uh, okay. Now, again, you guys all know I live alone. Oh, there is one more reason. There. There is but one I still take... Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I can sneak back in. And that is is that uh, my insurance in regards to the value of my firearms will cover anything that is stolen that I have currently. So if it's all broken in and stolen out, I financially, I will be compensated. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other downsides to it, but at least that one is covered through another means. Oh, it makes sense. As I would say, you know, I, you know, I live alone. Um, I'm not worried so much about, you know, children, because I don't have anybody, uh, young children come over, but friends do come over every once in a while. And a couple of them are idiots, so better safe than sorry that way. So that's a question that Stu has put in there is uh, is leading into that question so thank you for putting it in there why do we lock them up and this time we'll start off with Stone Guy 
A lot. Well, because I have kids, that's the the primary reason um, to keep them away from my kids. Uh, secondary is obviously burglary. Um, the safe I have, you know, they're not they're not they're not just gonna pick it up and walk off with it. So I feel somewhat secure. If someone did break into the house, they they wouldn't get my guns. So. That's it. Well, it definitely provides a barrier to them getting your guns. All right, Scotty. Uh, same reason as Stone Guy, exactly. Um, I got three kids. Can't let them, you know, have free access. I mean, with one caveat, um, my everyday carry. I don't tell my kids this. The barrel I keep in my truck. The barrel and slide I keep in my truck. And then I just bring the actual frame with the serial number inside, disassembled, and keep the magazine in another room. So that it's in three different pieces, and then to figure out how the hell to put it together. And find my keys. <laughs> so, that, that's wait, just... Wait, just, Scotty, do you have a firearm that's ready to go for home protection? Not downstairs. Upstairs, yes. Downstairs, I have an inoperable firearm. firearm. So you don't... You don't carry a firearm with you all the time? Not all the time, just when I'm out. I work downtown Indy, and basically that's like Beirut now. So, um, yeah. And not to get off... A little subject. Beirut here. We had a nice little fun incident last Monday. Yeah, not to get off subject too much, but while it's fresh in, in my mind, I want to go ahead and put this out for everybody. I, I'm a huge proponent of carrying a gun everywhere and at all times. Uh, especially in your home. I think that's a big um, false sense of security just because you're in your house. Um, I've seen multiple victims that get bum-rushed, so to speak, for lack of a better term. I agree. Uh, where someone could kick your door in in a fraction of a second, and you know it doesn't do you any good to have your gun upstairs. Um, so even when I'm in gym shorts, I have a little pocket pistol you know, in my gym shorts or... You know, if if I don't have my my main carry gun, oh, I agree. And you know, my my kids are three, four, and seven. So, you know, having a gun on me at all times, you know, you know how kids are always reaching up and grabbing at you, and I, I'm just not okay with that. Because you know, my kids, I I believe they're deaf. They can't hear a word I say. <laughs> <laughs> I really do think they are. I was gonna say. I was gonna start off every conversation with is like Xbox. Can Xbox. you hear me? So you start every conversation. You want Xbox in the trash? And they're like, what? They don't even play that. Here's well, here I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to be on the of kids playing with toys. I I'm going to be on the side of Scotty right here, and I have firearms. I can get it quickly, but I don't keep a firearm on my person in the house when I was. Uh, single and before I had children I used to keep like just pistols loaded in drawers around the house but as soon as I had kids I had to put everything up and you know I've, I've one home defense gun and everything else is in my safe and the point is is their safety is so much more important than the possibility of someone kicking in my door so I mean if I look at it the kid having an accident or somebody kicking in my door, the kid having an accident is exponentially higher. Well, that's why I say keep it on your person. I mean, they're not going to yeah, get at a gun he, that's in your pocket. Yeah, but I mean, wearing a holster, sitting around my house, laying in my bed, having to go out and do yard... I mean, I just... I can't do yeah. that. It only takes once. What I've done is... I, there, too much my, chance of an accident, in my opinion. My wife's grandfather, excuse me, um, gave me an old shotgun... And the firing pin is rusted shut. That's my downstairs, hey, get the fuck out of my house if I point this at you, gun. Okay? It has no chance of going off. Okay? The firing pin will not move. Okay? That's one of those projects that's going to be down the line of fixing it. But it's an inoperable firearm. So if someone breaks in, front door, I have a 12-gauge shotgun that looks to be operative from the outside. But I know it will not fire. Has it? I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. The firing pin will not move. I mean, I, I hear that, and that sounds sound, but 
Dude, what happens if if somebody calls your bluff, man, and you're like, you know, what's if up? If somebody calls my bluff, then then the wife takes over from there with a 357 next to the bed. So there's a 357 next to the bed. Safe. Ah. Quick access. Safe. Okay, let's 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 start getting back to the questions. We can get into the fine details through the questions. Yeah. I think. Well, you you already answered it, Nathan, when you said you know because of the kids. Yeah, and we can it's, skip it's, Daniel because he says he doesn't lock them up, so he's passed. So we're at edge. I uh, I keep them up. Um, pretty much everything that Stone Guy said, you know, covered it. Um, and also uh, because you know when you're away, you want some uh, peace of mind that your guns aren't going to be, you know, somebody's going to loot you and take your guns, especially when you have a couple of ones that can't be replaced. Or at least one that can't be replaced. And uh, but you know, I recently had my house broken into uh, a couple months back, three or four months back, and it was it were it was really scary. It's really pissed me off. The only thing I was thinking about more than anything was the guns. Did they get into them? You know, the other stuff can be replaced for the most part, and the guns can too. You know, but you know, it, they didn't. And why? Because I have an alarm system. And that scared the shit out of them as they kicked in my door. Mm-hmm. And. That actually brings up an important point here is our first line of defense as homeowners and those that live at home is an alarm system. So if you think about that, that's your first line of defense. Your gun safe is actually your second line of defense after that. They, they stole a TV off the wall, you know, 52 inch TV that yeah. was already kind of beat up, but they didn't get anything else. There was a laptop sitting on my damn dining room table as they walked in. They didn't even get that because they were just dead set on the usual. Some crackheads, you know, just fucking get the DVD player, the Wii, and the and the TV. But luckily, they didn't, they didn't have time to go upstairs and you know get into the shit. Right, because they can pawn a TV. They have to actually well, wipe the computer to get rid of it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of criminals nowadays seriously are are leaving uh, electronics behind. Uh, and when I, when I say electronics, I mean you know, computers and iPads and iPods and iPhones and that kind of shit because uh, you can ping those and track them. And I can't tell you how many times we've caught people with stolen goods be because they fucking powered up an iPhone or an iPod and you can immediately, it sends a signal where that phone was powered up at. So, yeah, that's right. Right. Starting yeah. to get smart enough to not leave all that shit behind and only take stuff yeah. that can't be traced. Real, real quick, I had a buddy who was at a bar um, that's right down the road from me, and he frequents that bar, and they got held up. And they was like in the dumbasses, purses, you know, wallets and watches and cell phone phones. So they put them all in a bag, robbed the bar. And it's right outside of a, of a, of a, in a good day, in a decent part of town, too, and um, they took everything. And one, and as the cops got there, the cop he told the cop, "Hey, do you mind if I go home? I need to go to my computer right now. I can find my phone, and I I can I can locate my phone." And he did. He called the police, told them exactly where it's at, and within an hour and a half of the incident, they were there at the people's house that robbed the place. And they caught two other people that robbed the uh, robbed that bar, and because they left the stupid phone on. All right, now we're up to hot. Sorry, what was the question? Why do you lock them up? Um, because we have uh, teenagers in the house, and I don't know who they're bringing over at all times. Uh, I keep as much of an eye as I can on them, but I'm out in my workshop most of the day, so the most I can do is check when I see when I hear people or dogs barking or something. Um, and uh, I, I just it's it's the smart thing to do. I mean, there's there's no reason to just leave them out. I'd rather somebody have to bring in a sledgehammer or a saw to get my guns out of the house. Good. No. G-Webs? Um, I won't rehash everything everybody else said, but I like uh, that Huck brought up something new. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I didn't do nothing bad. My friends always did all the bad stuff. And that's what I'd be more worried about with kids. I think my kids would be fine. It's those kids that they bring over who don't realize, you know, they go to the bathroom, they go in the wrong room start to be a dick and you know, a kid and, you know, rummage around through drawers and all of a sudden they find a gun next to the bed. Um, that's what I'd be more worried about, a kid that isn't trained. Uh, but we also, nobody brought up flood, fire. You know, we there's, at least here in Arizona, we got more of a chance of flood than burglary. So, uh, you know, safe can protect against those kind of uh, factors as well. And then lowering insurance rates. 
can be an issue as well. She <laughs> was. You brought up some very, uh, very important thing here. My, you know, my main thing is keep idiots out of my gun. So. We got a couple friends that are stupid. You know, and just you know, just act immaturely at times. It's best to keep them away from that stuff uh, for me. But yeah, floods. I'm not so worried about fires. Normally, you know, they're gonna protect you against a small fire in your house. But even the best safes are going to fail if your whole house goes up. So that's not a huge issue. Uh, Am I the last? Are you the last one then? Yeah, I'm the last one. So if you want to discuss this some more, let's let's talk about sort of follow up to it. How many guys say, use it? How many guys that are married use the safe so that you don't have to actually give your wife a total on what you got in there? Oh, yes, damn. sir. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she has no idea. It's like, well, uh, that's the gun. I keep, I, I I keep all sorts of everything. I mean, I know. I think everybody <laughs> probably keeps all sorts of stuff in the safe that they don't want their wives to know about. I just keep all my firearms in the safe because one of those rare people. Oh, whatever. Totally honest, like, what she knows about. Yeah. Yeah. You put me on video to oh, what? Yeah, it's his porno stash. So. Oh yeah, got to keep your girly magazines and your porno sh and CDs in there and. Keys to the basement. Hey, really? hey, hold on. Nobody really nobody tells Stone Guy about the power of the internet that he's still getting paper magazines. <laughs> <laughs> I like the story. Hey, so I just figured out how to use a computer that's yesterday. So. All you guys are going to be upset when there's an EMP. Nobody I has keep, any. Uh, that's right. Anymore. Speaking of other things, I keep a razor sharp knife in my uh, in my thing open or with a blade, you know, not in a sheath. That's uh, a good, speaking, that's speaking of a uh, computer, thing, you know, other stuff that you keep in your gun safe that you know isn't gun related. Speaking keep of a computer. flashlight in there, so if I have to get oh, in there yeah. when it's uh, locked up. Or you know, yep. I'm not expect to. I got a flashlight, or if I just want to see oh, something in the back. Power outage. Oh yeah, definitely keep flashlights in the I safe. Just, and when Huck copies said of that, things like all the important stuff, you know, documents and whatnot. Can when, when, when when Huck said that, I got the image of the road warrior when he's reaching under the car and there's the he's deactivating yeah. the 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 trigger switch and there's a machete. That's uh, a subject I was looking forward to, but I think I'm gonna miss is the the crazy mounts and hidden guns and stuff. Oh, g webs real quick. I oh, you didn't get out of it. It just got delayed. Speaking of computer literacy, I yeah. I printed out, I finally printed out the targets from uh, gun channels. They ended up little right thumbnails. On. No, they were they were regular, you know, full size page. But that target is only four and a half inches in circumference or diameter, so it's it's a pretty small little target. We're, exactly. We're, Definitely made for nine millimeter shooters because yeah, like one or two forties take the whole thing out. We we need we need um we need like I said earlier we need Ralph to put it in PDF format so it's a, a common size for everyone. No, yeah. it's, it's it is it's just a, it's a regular full size page when you print it, but the actual target area is only four. It's four and three quarter inches, so it's yeah, not. I just want to area. bring this up just in case anybody out there is watching and doesn't know. Gun uh, GunChannels.com has got a shooting Ralph channel going on. Nah. So, well, it's really cool. If you're not a member, go join. It's a dollar a month, so and you can enter this really cool shooting contest. And yeah. for those of us that are members and don't know how to find the target, it's located where exactly? In gun channels. It's on the main page. You got to go a couple of pages back off the, you know, current stuff. Yeah. I was it a while back. I don't know. I think it's also in the groups called Shooting Challenge or something. Yeah, it's yeah. also in that group. I was going to bring that up. Hey, Stone Guy, if you want PDFs. Talk to me, brother. I, can get I don't even know what the fuck a PDF is. Yeah, that was obviously me, because this old guy's never going to say that. Say yeah, that. sorry, that, that was me saying it. Yeah, what is a PDF? <laughs> it, it's, it's an Adobe Acrobat It's Acrobat a type of document style. that doesn't allow you to change the size as easily, so you have a more consistent print out of uh, multiple types of equipment. Isn't that something like paper? If I wanted to send like digital format, like, if I remember correctly. Like, like if I wanted to format? send someone a copy of a document that was important, it would probably be in a PDF format. Yeah, and and you didn't want them to alter the document? You wanted them to get the right. same document without alteration? You, you want, it, you want no. to basically have them open it, click it, print it, and have it be exactly like you sent it to them. If you email uh, something to somebody, the most one of the most acceptable formats is that .pdf. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. And before we now totally disrail this chat, I know I'm a little off topic here, but 
it's gun related. Um, we're talking about what else do you keep in your safe, and for me, and I just want to answer this, I keep uh, stuff that isn't, you know, stuff that I'd keep in a safe deposit box, but stuff I want still locked up, and I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but it's not as disgusting as Stone Guy's sticky porn mags. But first condom? There's no, nothing disgusting about that. I've got some personally signed... Uh, yeah, if you got some glass stuff you won't want to talk about, it's ornate, you know, of course. Okay. <laughs> you know, like you know, like pictures, old pictures that you cannot be replaced and stuff like that. You know, but stuff that's not important enough to to justify going up in size and another. You know, well, like like say you're going on vacation. It's like okay, my wife has jewelry. She wants me to take it yep. to put it in the safe deposit box. Well, it's a lot easier to stick it in the gun safe, you know, and other things like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Emergency cash, maybe little little things like that that might be important in an emergency. And what 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 G was was saying earlier about fire. My gun safe is actually out in my garage. If my house catches fire, I would hope that the fire department was able to come and put the fire out before it went from the house and engulfed the garage. You know what I'm saying? But I've seen what yeah, you've done in your garage. Location, your garage is going to go up first. Your garage is definitely yeah. My garage first. is a yeah. My my garage is probably hose. But there's a chance. No, you're going to start your garage on fire. That's what I'm saying. Shooting all those hot sparks in your garage. You know, I would say if my garage were going to catch on fire, it probably would have done it by now. Considering I've spent a week of throwing hot sparks in every corner of it. <laughs> <laughs> you're just drying up the timber. You're just prepping it. I keep my tax return, you know. In there, so she can't see it. All right. Uh, There's something else, though. So, just to mention that Fort Knox has started a thing this year, maybe last year, whenever recently, where they put a hard drive in the in the safe because a lot of times people have electric in there anyway for a heater or lights or something. So you have a hard drive in there uh, that's on a wireless, you know, Wi-Fi or whatever, and then that way you you can set it up to be a, a backup. So just like people have cloud drives, it's like a safe drive. You put your your backup in there and it's fireproof and theft proof and you, you know just like having another backup drive. One uh, can I can I interject something related to that in safes? I would suggest everyone take their cameras and get just a cheap SD card if your camera runs off that. Go and take your camcorder and film all your firearms in your safe and then go put that on an off site location only you know about. And if you're house ever does burn down, you can do it to your whole house too, but especially if you're safe and your house burns down, with that video you can go through with your insurance people and say this is the stuff I had. I tried to do that but I could only buy 16 gigabyte cards. You have a lot more guns than the average person. <laughs> Something that I, about, dude. I, got, I, got a six, I got a 32 gigabyte SD card I got the other day. I'll offer the service. If you want to take a video of all the guns in your safe and then send them to me, I'll, I'll store them for you. And then on a side note, I'm going to be doing another series on, or a new series on what people keep in their gun safes. Um, <laughs> what I was going to suggest is uh, something that, that, well, I gotta... that is free is simply uh, get all the serial numbers and descriptions of your guns. And, and you know, if you have cloud based email, Send yourself an email with all that information. Yeah, or there's a there's a nice app called Dropbox. Uh, you know, it's free to start up with. They give you X amount of free space, and as you go through, you can buy more space, obviously, and you can go through their little. Uh, they have like options there that you can go to, and you can actually get free space by answering some of their surveys or some of the criteria that they have, and they they give you more space depending on. And if you if you draw people to the website, they also throw you a little more space, and it's free start off with. Yeah, and, you're plugging it because you're trying to get more space, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how is that yeah, different? I, I would, I would, hold on. I would I definitely would, recommend that you have it uploaded in multiple yeah. spots because you never know when one of those companies is going to have a server crash or, you know, lose everything. Well, the, the reason, hold on, I'm going to disagree with just Dano there because um, I, I don't believe that writing down your guns and serial numbers in written form is as good as a video simply because uh, like when the insurance gesture went to Mr. Ron White and said, Mr. White, I don't believe Rolex makes a car stereo. You know, I mean, <laughs> what proof do you have if you just write stuff down? Well, 
since I called my insurance company before I did this, and I verified what they would need in case of a claim, which everyone should do, since not and all they, insurance companies and, 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 and they never lie. Well, I, I mean, well, but, it, but uh, uh, yeah, you, sh you should absolutely check with your insurer as far as what do they want and need in case of a claim, whether it's theft, fire, or something else, or flood. Well, because honestly, gonna... you're there. If you, I think what Dan is getting at is what at least what I'm assuming their insurance thing is is if you're paying for to put a number on it, let's say five thousand dollars worth of gun insurance, they assume that you have five thousand dollars worth of guns. I mean, right. The worst you're going to do is have ten thousand dollars worth of guns and then be hurting yourself. But um, if you're if you only have three thousand dollars worth of gun and you insure it for five, you're still paying the premium on five. So, you know, I don't think they're out anything. I'm going to say this because on Nathan's point. We got a great service right now. It's called YouTube. You can upload your video to YouTube, make it private. Right. But you okay, still need to that, you're right. Hold on. That that brings up another point yours. I was going to make. Cork is the reason I set an SD card and then keep it off-site, like in a site deposit box, or something, is because that keeps the information private from anyone in a say. <coughs> Who yeah, can exactly. your stuff. The reason I mentioned Dropbox, uh, I was really trying to plug it, but the reason I, I brought it up is because Dropbox, you can do it off your phone, uh, Android or iPhone, off your tablets. Um, it's it's very, you know, uh, it crosses a bunch of different technologies, and it all goes to the same place. Now some people know, like, I don't, I don't have any control over it, where it's stored, and some people are a little skittish about it, I understand. But it's free. But, but how many people out there don't want to ever risk the government knowing how many and what type of firearms they have. Anything that you transmit over the internet, any email, whatever, can be seen or flashed. You obviously know that. So it's an email, any document you're sending to anybody, in your insurance company, you know, those serial numbers technically can be read by the government. But, yeah, well, yeah, we keep but on this. an SD drive. card that goes from your camera into a box does not get transmitted over the internet, is my point. Yeah, but then you also have a, 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 it's a lot more difficult to secure a physical item from either theft, loss, fire, flood. Now you have all those corruption in the SD card. The file goes bad. Card goes bad. Yep. Okay, how about this? This is what I, I did. happened a few times. It's super annoying. Now mm -hmm. I'm really really cheap. So what I do is I do the exact same thing, but I take that CD or actually a DVD with all the family pictures and everything and a gun inventory and pictures, if I had guns, which of course the NSA knows I do not, uh, one DVD goes to my place of work, one DVD goes to my wife's place of work. Because in case of a fire, it's very unlikely that my home, my work, and my wife's work would all have a fire the same time. And, and the chance that my house will burn down and my bank with the safe deposit box room will burn down is not likely to happen at the same time either. No, no. A safe deposit. Well, what if that SD card at your bank goes bad? Well, or make the file on an SD card and then take the file something. and put it onto a writable CD and put both in the safe deposit box. Or put there one in the safe deposit box and take the other one over to your parents' house. Yeah, you got to remember, one is none. Okay, so... We've all decided we're going to do a video and we're going to put it on two forms of media in two separate off-site locations. And then it's probably a good idea to figure out a date like your birthday or Christmas or sometime to do that, uh, you know, keep updating it so that, it, you know, because everybody buys guns or sells guns or whatever. So that it's Daylight kind of... savings time, just like, you know, New Year's. Well, when are you supposed to change? Daylight savings time, you supposed to change a battery in your smoke detector. i got a 10-year battery in my smoke detector, so I don't worry about it. That's just throw the smoke detector away and get a new one, so... Stone Guy does not have his, his inventory on a floppy disk because that would require Stone Guy to have figured out how to use a floppy disk 10 years ago when they existed. Well, even uh, if 10 years ago, Rolodex. They, they didn't we all know he's using the CD tray as a couple. They haven't had the floppies uh -huh. in the 80s. Hey, when people start saying floppy disk around Stone Guy, people start, or Stone, Stone Guy starts making fun of people for not being able to get it up. <laughs> Now, here's another yeah. question. Uh, I, I didn't take I pictures of mine. We'll get it back on topic. I think this is, we're going to have a lot more questions. With you this say you one. don't or you do? I do. I take pictures. and. I like to suggest, you know, if you have a table that's strong enough to try to put them all on one table and take a picture of them together because that's the same kind of concept that, you know, yeah. I can prove I have them all because there they are all together. And then if you put a newspaper there, you can, like, kind of ransom them to yourself. 
<laughs> I don't get these back until I run one mile. Shit, you're never getting any guns no, that's back. That's crazy. Huh? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it has to be a back until you go shoot each one of them or something cool like that. Yeah, but here, but here it is. Uh, the next question I have for you guys: um, Do you have an alternate safe, like one in your bedroom, that you can keep your gun in at night, or? I have more safes than some people have guns. I bet. Well, there you go, Gio. You know. Well, because I started when I was a kid with the, one of those lockers, like a snap-on type of thing, and then I don't throw them away when I get new ones. So, I just put other things in them. Edge. Do you have like another safe in your house that's you know specifically just like a one gun or two gun safe where you can just quickly and easily get to your firearm just in case you need it for like a home invasion or? Yeah, it's called my hand. No, I don't have one. <laughs> well, I know Daniel doesn't have any safe, so you can skip hey, Dan on here. Uh, a question: uh, Have you gotten through yeah. everybody? No, no, we're at Nathan right now. Oh, okay, well, well... Was that the question? No, but... Uh, <laughs> but quick, if, if you look on the side for when yeah, you... Yeah, I, I see, and I'll ask that next. That's okay. the question I was bringing up next, so... I, I do not have... I only have the one big gun safe. I don't have a small spare one. Right, and the reason that I brought this question up is because Scotty said he had something. Scotty. It's for my wife. Which is a, like a bedside safe. What's that? Like a bedside safe? Yeah, hit the finger and she's in. It's I like could, it's a Barska biometric uh, handgun safe. What, mm -hmm. what, what, what our plan is, is if someone gets upstairs, I bum rush her and take the, take the hits while she uh, finishes it off. That's assuming right. the, the, the door. Stone guy? I just I have one big gun safe, and then I've got one of those little smaller fire safes. You know, it's only, you know, like the little 100-pound, probably three feet by three feet safes. Yeah. Well, the reason I brought this question is some of you have kids and... You carry all the time, so it means you have to either, you know, lock your bedroom door at night, which I'm sure a stone guy does. Um, nah, now nah, honestly, <laughs> I mean, when I when we go to bed at night, my my carry gun comes off of me and goes right onto the nightstand, and I do not lock it up. I don't take it out or unlock it because I mean, my kids aren't going to come in the room in the middle of the night play with a gun. You never know. Now nah, they they know better. No, I personally don't do it because uh, how very funny there. Uh, whatever your name is, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was reading the term. I personally don't because I don't have to worry about kids. You know, I, you know, I take my gun off at night and set it next to me uh, on the nightstand. But I wanted to, to ask that question really quick because Scotty brought it up that you know he does have that bedside safe, which I think is a great idea, especially if you have kids and. And easily access, especially those that are worried about safety at the home and safety keeping it away from kids and be able to have a gun right next to you. But the question that Dan all brought up, which I was going to bring up a little bit later, but I'll ask it now. It's a great question. I have nothing there. Do you lock up your ammo as well? No. And I'll start off with Stone Guy. <laughs> well... Not in the safe. Um, I keep all my ammo in containers, though. I have shit, probably 12 ammo cans. I do have one big, um, like, a, like a Pelican case that's got all the good premium carry ammo in, and I've got a little padlock on that. But other that's than that... up your ammo. Yeah, I guess so, but... Other than that, because that thing, that thing probably weighs two hundred pounds. So there again, if someone if someone breaks in, you know, they're they're not going to be carrying because it's upstairs. So I doubt they'd be if they had two two people maybe, but 
They may think it's filled with gold. They're not going to pick it up and carry it out very easily, so I just put a lock on it to keep them from taking the contents out. But other than that, all my ammo is in just ammo cans, and that's mostly just for potential, um, you know, humidity. Safe for storage. Yeah, just safe for drier storage, yeah. yeah. By the way, I'm going to bring this up. Uh, the um, little uh, silica pouches that you can put in those yep. ammo cans are great. Yep. Yeah, you midway. Know, check out. ammo can. Put well, look, no, check this out. Check this out. Um, if, you, if you look up YouTube, you can make your own with coffee filters, and you can buy uh -huh. stuff and make your own. If you want to get real, you know, uh, you know, do it yourself kind of guy, uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that uh, you can actually check out. You can make your own, and uh, they're, they're good stuff. Yeah, you can make your own, or if you buy something and it has little pouches in it, save those little pouches and just throw a few in your ammo can. All right. Uh, Scotty, do you lock up your ammo? No, I do not. In fact, if you look right here, you will see 243 that was size, case sized by a three year old. I don't let them help me when I'm priming. The seven year old actually put a couple bullets in, but uh, it's a, a bullet's a bullet. You know, I dare you to drop a match in the gunpowder. Right here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If I was a smoker, I'd have a match, but but no. Uh, I you see, no, you didn't you didn't catch it. I didn't say a lit match. I just said I'll match. Oh, oh, oh that's a whole different story now. Uh, how clever <laughs> of you! Uh, My kids. Hey, I want to see uh, how people think if they actually see you know. I think came for a gun chat, and I got all kinds of cool word trickery. <laughs> yeah. Nathan, you're up. Didn't say it was a flavor. Just a Sorry about that. I was I was making a list of things I need to pick up at Cabela's tomorrow. Um, you were reading, you know, what you're doing. No, I'm, well, I was getting a piece of information off an of email because I I got to get the when I go to Cabela's and I don't oh, have how much does she, does she charge? Anyway, when I go to Cabela's and I need reloading data on a bullet I don't have a reloading manual for, they have all their manuals out and you just write down what you need. It's really great. But anyway. Um, I do not keep most of my ammo locked up, and none of my reloading components are locked up. So basically, I keep the firearms all locked up, and I have some boxes of, of ammunition I threw in the gun safe just because it was a convenient place to store it. You know, But other than that, all my other ammo is just strewn about the house, and I got probably 20 pounds of gunpowder mostly in ammo cans in a closet and some is out in the open and I've got primers and ammo cans basically I'll leave the bullets out but and some of the gunpowder out I try to put everything in ammo cans but I run out of space sometimes hey don't put the uh, primers in ammo cans you should keep those like out so that if they if in the unlikely event that they do explode like spontaneously or just because of heat that they explode with the most volume possible if you put them in a metal ammo can, that's going to hold it in like a pressure cooker, like like the Boston bombs. But it'll also eliminate almost every reason that they have to lock. Well, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I should just make sure I have all the primers in one ammo can and away from... Because like right now, i got primers in ammo cans with pounds of gunpowder, so that's a great combination, right? No, 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 no. No, 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 sir. Yeah, that, I should split those up now that you mention it. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a pressure cooker bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Primers and powder should go in different areas. You're right. I didn't think of that. <laughs> if if you could, can you drill a hole in the ammo can so that it's not airtight? That would be great. Or you can just what, leave what it. Fun is that? Don't, don't clench right, it down. Right, 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 right. Yeah. All right, uh, Dano, do you lock up your ammo? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, uh, I have a. Uh, I have a medium-sized steel case that I have, and uh, that's, uh, at least in, in my weird mind, my way of uh, keeping um, myself from getting shot with one of my own guns. Uh, the guns that I have when I'm not here are, are don't have any ammo in them. The ammo's all in uh, a locked um, container. So, uh, all right, Edge, what about you? 
All my ammo I keep in, in ammo cans, um, you know, military grade 50 caliber ammo cans. And then um, they're they're locked up behind the closet door with the key. Um, that you know, uh, I did want to do a thing where you the ammo cans you can mod them to actually do a, a lock on them. Um, you can do that if you look it up. You can actually put a, you can mod them to where you can actually put a real lock on them. Yep, your daughter's asking for you. <laughs> and G-Webs. I, I think that there's a kid getting yelled at in Texas right now. <laughs> yep. Um, I lock up all my ammo. Very good. Now with me, it's a mix. Um, I keep my shotgun ammo in ammo cans, so I don't lock, consider that locked up to just store it in ammo cans. But I do keep my my pistol and twenty two locked up in. Smaller. I mean, somebody wanted to steal it, they can't break the lock later, but I do keep them locked up. It just keeps uh, an idiot that comes over out of them. You seem so to have a lot I of do, friends as idiots. Idiots just walking I have a place, couple right? friends that are I call idiots because, well, they don't always think before they act. They don't sound you know, that happens. right into your kitchen, let alone deeper into the house. A, it happens, you know. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know, know if it's beyond the range, uh, range of possibilities for people, but, you know, maybe you're away from you know, an extended distance from your house. You need to have somebody go over to check a pet, or uh, you're yeah. away and somebody needs to check a leaky you know, water coming out from underneath the door. I mean, there's those situations that don't happen often, but can happen occasionally where you have an in-law or a friend or whoever, neighbor, you know, go check on something who isn't a close friend, neighbor, relative, whatever, and I'd rather have all the stuff tidy and not laying out, then, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It just doesn't come up if it's not anywhere they're ever going to find it. Yeah, I use these portable cases. They're kind of like uh, Pelican cases. They're just different manufacturer that just throw, you know, um, a padlock through. So, I mean, it works. It keeps mind. It just gives me a little bit more peace of mind than anything else, you know. But, and now I forgot the next question I was going to ask. There's a whole list of them here, and I was going to there was a specific one that, that sprung into. Since uh, we're going off the of safes, it sounds like. What about uh, the hidden type of contraptions? Oh, There's all these mirrors and no, shelves. That, and that was the next one. Thank you for bringing it up. We're not going off the of safes. We got one more thing. Because, you know, when we're driving in a car, we can't always take our gun into a certain business, um, federal area, police station. We've got to go there to pay a parking ticket or something. Uh, or, you know, whatever the case may be, do you keep a, a lockbox or a little, you know, a little mini safe in your your car to store your gun in? Because I know Yankee does. So we'll start with G-Webs. I do. And in Arizona, there's the laws that if the public building, like a courthouse or whatever, is going to not let us bring in guns, they have to give us lock storage. So consider... Cool in your state to do that because they hate it. Because then what happened? And it's kind of the reason that the they did that. The the, the group that pushed that pushed that. The reason they pushed it in the first place uh, is to uh, basically to, uh, they gave a public building a, a, a dilemma. They either had to pay to put in these lockers or just not enforce that stupid law. And a lot of them, and actually they were forced to not. They couldn't. Oh, they couldn't enforce the law if they weren't going to fork over the money to buy the lockers. So sometimes, even if they didn't like the fact that they had to not enforce the law, they can't enforce the law. So anyway, if you're able to urge your local uh, pro-gun places to uh, push for stuff like that, and eventually we won't have to take them off when we go to those kind of places. Yeah, All speaking right. just to what G-Webs just said, I really would love that to be here in Texas because every time I get jury duty, they want to have a they have free parking that a bus picks you up at that's like in the middle of a place that looks like the zombie apocalypse happened there. <laughs> and and that's I go down and I, gun then. Yeah, I, I pay $10 for... Well, I don't want to be there without a gun on me either, waiting for the bus. So I yeah. go down and pin, pay $10 to park across from the courthouse where, you know, there's cops all the time walking around outside. But, I mean, it just sucks that I'm, I call the courthouse. I'm like, do you have a locker or a way to put these up? And they're like, no, can't bring it. Damn, Ed, you back yet? I'm not yep. seeing his sausage fingers. Oh, he is back. 
Hey, what's up? Did you hear the question I, uh, that I asked? No, I didn't. Repeat it, please. Do you keep like a lockbox or a storage uh, spot in your uh, car uh, for your farm? You can't bring it into a certain place? Not yet. When I buy a truck again, I probably will. But in the car, um, I plan. You know, I plan to keep the car. But when I get a truck, I'll definitely do something about that. But currently, no. All right. I want to bring something up here. There are little, little safes you can buy that, like, uh, like uh, can bolt in or cable into a place and uh, like slide underneath your seat or. Yeah, they're as small as your little like scuba diving purse you bought. Right. You know, something to store your gun like that. I'd. I'll go into that a little bit more, uh, Dano. This is not a purse, first of all. Some of those things. Um, sometimes if you have a uh, vehicle with power seats, they're really low to the, the floorboard, and you can't actually get those in. Mm. Sometimes. So check, check check before you buy. Get the tape measure out. And we got Bad Company 1911, so he'll get a whole bunch of questions at once when we get to him, which will be uh, right after me when I go... Uh, but we're up to Dano right now. Um, no, um, but the reason that I don't is I prefer uh, what I'll call a concealed versus, gee, what's that box doing in there? You know, as far as a philosophy. I realize... Oh, no, wait, hold on. I don't know. We're all picturing different things. I'm picturing right. the kind of thing Quirk's talking about where it's like a little metal box that... It's like a clamshell. You lock mm -hmm. it. I've done videos on them. It's what I travel with uh, in a plane, too. So it's not something that's huge that's like... Well, it's definitely not in sight, but it's not even bolted to your vehicle, really. Oh, you It'll mean, fit like one gun So you can discreetly just unholster, put it in there, and then lock it, slide it underneath the driver's seat or the passenger seat or into the console or whatever, you know, someplace that can fit a paperback book, really, and then I'm, uh, just boogie out of the car. I'm, I'm looking at a thing on... Cabela's website says there anyway, but they have thirty dollars little bulldog cases that they either have the little cable like you hook a laptop to to secure it in your car, or they have one that has a bracket mounting that it basically locks itself inside the bracket that you can mount underneath your seat. Then you have to unlock it. And you could slide the whole thing out and get it out. So I mean, just there's options. Lots yeah, 30 of bucks. Options. But so we're Nathan, you're up. Uh, the answer is no. I do not have any lockable way to put it in my car, but I'm looking at yeah, these right things that I think I might tomorrow. very well soon have a video <laughs> on it. All right. Uh, we'll go to Scotty here, and then we'll ask back up near a little strong guy than me. But Scotty, you're up. About what? Do you have like a little uh, safe lock lock box. box in your car for for your vehicle? No. Box. I keep the barrel of the gun in there, and I just take it in to work with me. You know, I, right. I drop my in Indiana. You can drop off a child at, at school in the mornings as long as you don't actually get out of the vehicle. That's that's the caveat. You can't get out of your vehicle. Um, so as soon as I leave the parking lot, you know, I get a stop sign, reassemble the firearm, and I'm good to go. So, and then I keep the gun in two 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 pieces. Well, one one piece is outside, and then inside I keep the frame in one spot and the magazine in another. So you can't you can't have the gun assembled and even on the parking lot. Of, I can, uh, but you know I don't need to assemble it in front of my child before I take him to school. So that's what I'm saying. Why even disassemble it in the first place? Just keep it. You know, there, there's a police officer in the parking lot, so we're cool. All okay. right, so I'm not, worried, okay. not worry about something happening in the parking lot because there's already an officer of the law, you know, sitting there 30 feet away from me. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not worried at that point. He's going to get into that school before I do anyway. I'm. I'm pretty slow. Stone guy. No, I don't. Um, if I have to store my gun, I just stick it under the seat. All right. No, I will answer this, and then we'll hear from Rob. Um, I do. Because sometimes I think I'm in the post office and, <laughs> you know, you can't carry into the post office, which is fucking lame to begin with, but, and part of my language error, but it, I just... You can't even park in the post office with a gun. No. Actually, that law has been, been changed. Yeah. You can actually do that now because Colorado made, set the president on that, uh, precedent on that. 
I thought that the way that the post office one is worded, it says unless you can't walk in here unless you're authorized to have a gun, and having a CCW makes you authorized now. I don't know. Um, uh, we, I was told in my training that you know, the post office off limits, even though it's stupid as it is, they don't understand why you're not allowed to even uh, go to the post office when you got a gun in your car at all. Uh, uh, that was a ways back, though. I don't know if it's changed. Maybe Nathan can uh, you know, chime in on that. Yeah, but the little thing I have, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, but it's a little clam clamshell box that is a combo lock, and it's, you know, cable locked underneath my seat. I can slide it in. There's enough cable room. I can slide it in and actually put it on top of the seat and put my gun in there and then slide it back underneath. Not a problem. And they, they cost $30 or less, so it's an option. It's Again, it's one step. More that if somebody breaks in your car, well, you're in you're in that place where you can't have a gun. Where they they're gonna have to be able to break the combo or break the lock or be able to cut the cable or whatever it is to get them keep them from your gun. So it's another step. You've taken that, you know, you've taken and done what you can while carrying a gun, and you know you've, you've done to what you can. You know, it's, you know, nothing's perfect, but there you go and. For those that don't, I would definitely suggest you look into it because it's again that one step. I think yeah. for a while, contracts for the military, and when you do that, you cannot, you, you, you can't have anything on you. Uh, you can get away with it, next time. Everybody's getting around the office, like, oh, well, they say you can't have one. Oh, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, and like, yeah, wait till you get popped by a fucking MP. When they decide to do a check on your Well, car. yeah, I mean, if, if you if you are in the military or have to work on a military base, we wouldn't suggest taking firearms in. But for the vast majority of people out there that, you know, like in Texas, you can keep a gun in your car without any type of licensing. You can just keep a loaded pistol in your car. If you can buy a pistol in Texas, you can keep one loaded in your car as long as it's concealed. But you so, cannot exit the vehicle with that car. I know, but yeah. think about how many guns are in glove boxes and center consoles that are not contained that somebody just has to... Every car that breaks in, you probably got a one in five chance of getting away with a gun if you are robbing a car. And we're the people that are conscientious enough to give a darn about even the concept of a locking box. Think of how many people buy a gun and don't even bother to care what the law is, and they just buy it from their glove boxes. That's what they see on TV or whatever. Mm-hmm. That, that's why I want to strongly... That's why I was bringing this up, because those that don't, look into it. You know, 20 30 bucks, you can get one. Gives you a little extra peace of mind. And, uh, well, what, well, what, really, what peace of mind is it if they're just going to steal the whole box versus the gun? Because here's the peace of mind. You get some kid who's doing it on a dare or some you know, like, you know initiation thing or just a kid who's mad at his parents and he's trying to get attention... You know, a kid who's not a bad guy, who's just, you know, doing a bad thing, and he's in there to steal your uh, toll change or your uh, sunglasses or who knows what a kid might think he's going to steal. Do we have CDs in cars anymore? I don't know. But then all of a sudden he sees a gun sitting underneath the driver's seat just sitting there or maybe in a sock or something, But or else he sees this thing that's just a black thing that's heavy and it's connected to the undercarriage of the seat. And he's, unless he's brought wire cutters with him, unless he's a... You know, a criminal intent on cutting something, he's probably not taking that thing. And, and, and I can't tell you how many people. A strong guy, it's just not a box. They slide underneath your seat. It's connected. There are a whole uh, bunch of different ones. Oh, uh, okay. It's connected oh. with you can, you, know, cable yeah. wire you can get you some that are, that are are mounted too if you want. And you can yeah. easily mount it to your inside of a console or into your trunk or glove box. Or there, and then we haven't even talked about all the holsters that are connected to. You know, the center consoles, you could connect one of these things just as easily. Well, and, and yeah. like, like for instance, me, I have my little uh, gun that's my pocket carry that I'll take in and have, have to have in my car. But then I always have a spare gun in my car in case I forget it or not carrying it. I have a spare gun that I keep in my car, and I probably should put the spare gun in a safe just because I never use it, but it's always a backup so, in the car, put it in the safe. I was safe, going to touch on that before we left. The yeah. little subject of these things is you can keep one of these things in your trunk with like a little Caltech or something in there, or high point. And then you've yeah. always got a firearm if you want to. You even if you just go, hey, I've got to kill three hours and there's a shooting range across the street. Luckily, I've got a little gun in the trunk. Or, you know, shit hits the fan and i got to arm the friend I'm with. 
Yeah, I got a spare. I got a well. See, like I, I have the 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 reason I carry. One of the main reasons is, is that I have that little itty bitty nine millimeter car, and then I keep just one of my spare bigger Glock forty fives in case of an emergency. You know, where I have to get home. I like having the larger, higher capacity firepower of being able to grab that spare Glock than my little nine millimeter car. You know, it's just a lot more bullets, a lot more power. Put one of these up underneath somewhere in the trunk, where you know you took you an hour and a half to get a thing installed, and another you know five minutes worth of awkward reaching around to get the key in there. And that's less, very little chance somebody's going to find that rooting through your car. Yeah, and they're you know a lot of these sets are designed to kind of blend in. You know, it's got a black cable, so it's if you got any kind of you know most of the metal work on underneath the car is black, so it's going to yeah. blend right in. Now this here at Shot Show, we saw some guy selling. Uh, kind of like that little purse that Edge bought, did a video on that material. Like purse except instead of shaped purse. like a like a Glock, it's shaped like a Kleenex container. And I think the concept is you put your safe, like what I'm showing oh. in my picture right now, you put that closed safe into the bottom of this thing that's made out of that material. But on the top of it is a Kleenex container. There's Kleenexes we'll, coming out of it. We'll just Maybe see it on, on your back seat or something and. I have a quick I hold on. I, I have a quick question for everyone, and it I'll can be up with the right if Cork's okay with it. No. Who here parks their car in their garage? Nobody. Yes. yes. I, I don't know where the chauffeur puts it. Come on. Okay. Well, that's uh, a quick yes. Yeah, so I have a garage, so I keep my car in the garage. Yes. Yeah, but a lot of people I know don't park their car in the garage and have a gun in it, and anyone can come along in the night, put their you know, hammer to the window and get the gun. Biker Bob, a good example of this. He just keeps his car out in the uh, yard and, or truck out in the, the driveway and what happens? Somebody comes in and breaks the window and steals $5 worth of, worth of loonies from his what you know, is ashtray or whatever carry, it is and takes off. Right, hold on, I want to go back to what you said. You have so that a thing talking, dollar coin in Canada. That that Kleenex that you're talking about, I saw that. It's the same company that makes this uh, case. Okay, yeah, it's so like yeah, that makes little, sense. Yeah, they had they had the one look like a, also like a flare, and, uh, like a roadside device. Yep, one of them says road equipment or something, or road yeah. safety, and then one yeah. of them says, well, one of them said CDs. That's the one I didn't get because I'm like, well, that's I think the kids are going to steal a thing of CDs way faster than they're even going to steal a gun. Some of you might go, oh, I don't want to get into that kind of trouble stealing a gun, but I'll take his CDs. Well, they had a day planner also. I was going to buy a day planner. Day planner, same thing. Like, oh, yeah. Bucks. Like, let's let's make it attractive. Let's make it look like a thing of beer. Well, the day planner, I was going to buy that one for the Glock 26, so that's kind of cool. I told myself, hey, go get Daddy's day planner. Go, go, go. So that's the same company that makes the tissue box and stuff? Yeah. I kind of thought the Road Flare one and the tissue box were kind of clever. Because, <laughs> again, how many moms and stuff have a tissue box in the car? And who knows, you know, it just kind of, when you look at it, it looks sort of like something you'd make to not fall around, you know, slip around in your car. Yeah. It's Velcro, like you put a, you put a real tissue box under it, and it's Velcro attached to a base that has the gun and maybe some magazines in the base. That's a really cool idea. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, like 30 yeah, bucks. Like, or something. All right. Uh, looks like Stone Guy. Yeah. Rob, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? <laughs> All right. Do you keep uh, your gun, gun? Well, I'm gonna make this really hard. Do you keep your guns locked up at home? Locked up at home, except for what I'm carrying. Yes, in the car, I never carry a gun in the car. It's always on my person. And if I ever like, maybe the one time a year where I go somewhere where I have to lock the gun in the car, I just throw it in the glove box. I'm in and out of the courthouse, got my new tag, and I'm done. Literally nowhere else do I go that I don't carry. <laughs> so you well, you actually answered all the questions pretty uh, damn fast. So you register as a child of a sex offender, and then you're in and out, in and out. All right, and Geo, do you want to talk about something else now? <coughs> like funky ways to to hide a gun? Slips, slicks. Oh, yeah. you mean like with the shelves and the mirrors and that kind of thing? Yeah. No, I, I could kind of consider those to be safes. It's just they're not physical safes. They're it's still a way of securing your firearm. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know where you. It just depends on where you draw the line. I mean, they're obviously not secure, but they're also, you know, hidden. So. 
Yeah, incognito is kind of just, you know, if, well, if there is I don't have a whole lot of information on this because I don't do that really, so kind of interested in, in this top. I know people that do it. I think it's a great yeah. idea. So I was hoping you'd be back before we talked about this, but we definitely can talk about this and you have to watch it later. But do you guys do that? You know, do you want to leave this as an open or do you want to go left to right on this Q-Ups? I don't know. It's your chat. I just thought it had something to do with storing guns. Are you talking about like the uh, the hide of hide what is it? What's the the wall safe with the mirror that Tac Daddy just installed? And I think well, there's at least that three different mirror options that are really popular lately. I can think of, and then I saw these shelves that just a regular shelf was kind of a fancy trim around it, and it just it looks like a thick shelf. And then it uses magnets to let it open. There's always been the medicine cabinet type of stuff that, you know, is like a picture frame, except that it's kind of like the concept of a medicine cabinet, so that it's flush against the wall, but, or like a wall safe, you know, your guns are hidden behind it. I've seen clocks that open up and hold guns. I mean, that's There's a really cool iPad, or a, what do you call it, like a, where you plug a iPhone down onto its speakers, or like a clock radio, see one so like that, that opens so up and has a gun in it. Some people like a badass coffee table that has like all these little slots in it and shit too. Yeah, there's a like a lazy boy type of chair where there's like a compartment next to the le uh, lever. You know, so that you oh, I love a that idea. Firearm, you like that? I I want a lazy boy chair that when I pull the handle and extend it, I just have guns that pop up along with my footrest, then rotate. <laughs> Definitely an item for your man cave. That, that would be the lazy boy turret. That's right. All right. Anybody else has any uh, input on this subject? I, I'm finding it all interesting. I never really looked into it. Um, I'm guessing it's uh, unique ways to conceal or keep your gun safe in the home. Kind of, yeah. Anybody? Of, is that really storage? On, on the hey, we already know all Yankees' answers, so. No, I can tell you where the videos about this. So I don't know if they ask you all these weird questions, but I figured out I can keep my uh, car uh, CM9. I can actually fit it in the battery compartment of, of my motorcycle if I wanted to store it there for some reason. I was just playing around with that today when I was doing the oil change. Yeah, for those of you that might uh, be interested or know somebody who has a, a Harley, most Harley gas tanks are actually not one tank. It's actually two tanks side by side. And it's somewhat common among certain organizations that they will take uh, the little trim between the two halves, pop that trim out, and put a little leather pouch in there, and put a uh, single stack down there in the pouch, pop the trim back in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You just got me thinking like Hell's Angels and the shit. That all I've heard about them. I'm I'm thinking about I'm thinking about uh, Easy Rider. <laughs> well, actually, this I, uh, the, I guess or the cash. This actually is from one of those types of organizations. All right, UFS has a room here. I put in the reason why I'm trying. Do we want to run Yankee through the questions real quick? How much time we got? Well, we, we all know Yankee sure. has the cold carry gene, so he doesn't need to answer that. Um, we started out with safes. Yankee's definitely got opinions on safes for sure. What do we do? We went safes. If we have them, we know he does. And then... We know he has a spare gun safe in his lock up your guns and lock you yeah, why do, oh, no, why do you lock the, the your secondary guns? He has a wall mount had... safe, a secondary wall mount safe. Oh, he does talk about that? Okay. And then where does he stores on. ammo and guns? Oh, do you lock up your ammo? Have we asked you that one before, Yankee? Well, I mean, I can if there's little there's a little padlock on the side of the doors, but 90% of the time I don't because I never have a gun they can get to, so...
I'd say we jump into another one because I think we've all, I mean, unless somebody who listens to the Yankee for the first time, this isn't all brand new stuff for us. I threw some other stuff in here that was topics that we haven't touched on before. Um, well, we kind of were just talking about the Dana was giving us his biker way of hiding a shiv or a, a Sarah Night Special and a Harley. But then what about like RVs, boats, four wheelers, um, other type of secondary vehicles? Does anybody have those that they've that they carry with, and how do they store on those? Uh, I'm, I don't have any. I, can, I, I can't, can't go left or right because I don't have cork screen. Yeah, I, I don't have any like gear. I'll just say it. Um, I don't have any extra like uh, fun vehicles like that. I don't have any cool extra stuff. Well, Geobs, um, I'm listening here, and I can comment. That I'm just eating because of low blood sugar, but. One do left or right that's Yankee than you. I don't have any. Yankee all of a sudden get top billing. Alphabetically, I'm way ahead of I don't have any four wheelers or I'm not a one percenter. I don't have a lot of recreational vehicles. <laughs> well, I think it's probably gonna be the case because with just selling one of your firearms, I'm sure. Well that's the thing. We spend most of our discretionary income on guns. Most of us have multiple firearms where we don't have and I've never understood that. It's like I'll look at my cousins who make a third of the money we make, and they're driving a thirty-five thousand dollar truck, have two four wheelers, and a snowmobile. I'm like, how do you do that? I can't afford that, and I make three times as much money as you. Uh, long, long credit card payments. <laughs> I mean, just, they spend every dime they make on payments, I guess. So when you rode a motorcycle, did you carry? And if you did, how did you carry it? What's that? When you had a motorcycle. Oh, I mean, I usually have a mot motorcycle. I just don't have one now because I was told, if you're going to be a father, you can't have a motorcycle. Right. <laughs> uh, when I carried on a motorcycle, I have a big fanny pack that has a double clasp clip that I carried that I carried in that. Okay. I mean, I also have a, I have a gold wing at the moment, but uh, uh, in the front fairing pocket it's, it, uh, is it also a place both left and right. My old CB360 used to have a perfect little compartment right above the, right right by the battery compartment, right behind the battery compartment behind the engine where you could just pop it open. It used to be for like it was like for a tool kit, and you could just stick it in the perfect place to put one. Of course, you had to pop the side plate off to get to it. But whenever we would go fishing, we'd just make sure to put them in uh, whatever floatable, like something that would hold air. So even if it wouldn't hold the weight of the firearm, at least it wouldn't hopefully go all the way to the bottom of the bed of the lake or whatever so we can still get it out. Never drop one, but always tried to be sure to keep a firearm in the, uh, you know, something with some buoyancy. They should make something with, like, life preserver material in it that you can keep a rifle in. Like a floating sling. They make something like that. Those guys in the... Uh, those, uh... Guys that hunt alligators, they're always with their 22s. Alligators. Or, uh, I've got for you. I, I've never seen or heard of this, but a company could attempt to make a stock of a really buoyant material. Swamp, swamp people. Swamp people show. Alligators. Actually, well, there's that one, the, the Henry. Seven that has a, yeah, the Henry AR7 has a, a floating stock. Now that you mentioned that. Yeah, well, I bought some it's one pretty one. big, and that's an aluminum gun with an aluminum barrel, and its stock is pretty big, so I assume... For a real size rifle, they'd be pretty huge. Rifle. Right. Now I bought a friend of mine that for Christmas, and he loves that little thing. He's like, that thing is so awesome for a little survival rifle. I always thought they were kind of cheesy, but he thinks it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I don't know. Okay, this is going... Yeah, this is going back to the storage here, and pardon my full mouth here. I'm trying to talk with some food in it still. Um, we always assume there's food in your mouth when you talk. I'm going to say how rude. Hey, uh, that's what happens when you're diabetic and you get a little butcher. you got to eat. <laughs> I hate that. Um, when do you store your guns? Do you uh, lube and oil them for storage? And this will go left or right with the uh, G-Web since yeah, he's on the phone. Ever since I was a kid, you'd have those, like, oil rags, so I can't put a thing back into the safe without, like, the last thing to touch it would be the oil rag. 
In other words, yeah, I wipe all my fingerprints and stuff kind of thing off it so you don't get any oils on the gun. But uh, they're not all stored like for deep storage where I take them apart and make sure everything's perfectly clean. All right, what about for long storage? Then, yeah, take them out every once in a while, clean them up. Kind of spoiled living in Arizona. We don't have to worry about rust. Like some Do people. you clean your guns, use these, and then once it's clean and wiped down, put it back. That way you're not leaving oils from your fingers on it. And by the way, he's showing latex gloves from all his prostate exams. No. Those aren't all. Yeah, yeah, Yankee's just cheap. You can use that five times, you know what I mean? I get these free, so why not have them around? That is very true. Now, did you hear the question? What was the question? Do you do you uh you know do any special lube oiling for uh, for storage? For storage? Right. Not really. I've found it's detrimental to leave too much lube on a gun for storage. It's best to it's best to what? oil them. You leave too much oil on a gun, you're attracting particulates, you're causing pitting. That's one of the number one lead leading things to pitting on a gun is storing it with too much lube on it. So. I mean, believe me, all the rifle, all the 19, or not 19, Smith and Wessons I've had that have had pitting on them from people, it's where they've stored them with too much lube on them. Particulates have settled in that lube, and it's caused the barrels to pit. So You're supposed to wipe your guns down, put a thin layer on them, wipe them down good, store them, and then... What about a muslin? Unless you're going to soak them to the point where stuff can't get to them, you know, like, like dipping them in cosmoline or something, but... Storing wet can be just as bad as for your guns as storing dry. It can be worse, actually, if you're, well, you know, in a dry climate, especially. It's like those socks that they sell you to put guns in. <laughs> oh, a friend of mine's a gunsmith, and he's like, I've peeled so many fucking ruined guns out of those socks that they sell you that have the stuff in them. Well, well they're good back. for what they are, but they're not... If they if you get water on them, then yeah, they basically trap a horrible environment in there. Yeah, they just make it. A, a, they, what he way he put it is those socks are like it's like creating your own little swamp to store your gun in inside your gun safe. You know, I, I use the socks to separate the the couple of rifles like the 1022 and my K31, so they don't just don't bang around next to each other. You ever put a bra on the front of your car? Nope. But I don't remember back in the 80s, that was like a real popular thing. Uh, have you ever seen a car that gets one of those taken off of it? And you think when you're going to take it off, you think it's like, well, the paint underneath? Mm. The paint's going to be worn. But then you take the bra off, and the paint underneath is like almost gone from it. That's about what those socks do to your guns. Since Yankee answered and pretty much ruined what I was going to say, <laughs> um, let's keep go going on the left to right. Do you... Uh, do you do that same thing, Edge? Because I know you got collector pieces. Well, no, I mean, I oil everything, but I'm, I don't, I don't like, soak them, you know. I just use my finger, yes, as, you know, when I'm moving, I'll put the little spots on there as I'm uh, in, in the parts that are obviously rubbing against each other from the slide, you know, even on the luger, and just, you know, rub it on my finger as I'm doing it at the end just to kind of get them to coat in there. And, and, but I don't keep anything real wet. It's just, it's just, ad, just adequate. Best thing to do is keep, if you're going to store them long term, keep them away from air, moisture, and sunlight. Well, the problem that we have here is a lot of humidity. Not a lot of humidity, but we have a good deal of humidity. It's not like Florida or anything, but we get a decent amount of humidity here in the summer. I found that the golden rods work wonders in my safe. So, I mean, we, I live in Oregon. It doesn't get much wetter than. You know, Oregon and Washington. I mean, Seattle or Portland, two of the wettest places in the country. And I found the golden rods in my safe. Keep the inside of my safe dry as a bone. Well, do we need to discuss this topic? Because Yankee has pretty much probably ruined everybody's answer because they're probably all going to change it if they had a different answer. No, everybody can disagree. Since when? Uh, I mean, I, I, I do keep, um, you know, decadence uh, uh, packets or whatever. I have those ones that are rechargeable, you know, all up and down the gun safe and in my ammo cans too, uh, if you, you, you want to be interested in that. But you can put them, uh, I actually got a good tip from another YouTuber. It says, you know, like you're, you're some, in the summer, and especially here in Texas, this fucking garage gets hot. Man, you can bake bread in this shit in the summer. Just throw them in your damn garage, and when you leave, they'll recharge them. Because you supposedly those uh, 
once or stack on or whatever brand it is, you have to put them in the oven for 10 hours. I mean, can you imagine how much energy you're going to use by putting your oven on for 10 hours? I don't know to what degrees, but that's, a, you know, I'd rather just use nature to do it and store them in their garage, leave them, let them bake it in the garage, and they'll recharge themselves. Are you talking about the silica things? Yeah, the... the so like a pouches, the one, the, the, yeah, the ones that are that come in that package, they have a little marker on them, tells you you know how bad they're getting and when to uh, you know remove them and replace them. Uh, if you they have the option where you put them like in a low heat in the oven, but I think I, think I remember the instructions like ten hours, you know, to to recharge them. I was like, yeah, I gotta put them in the oven for ten hours. You know, I'll just you know put them in the garage and leave them there for a couple of days, and they should recharge themselves to where they're completely dry again. You use them again. All right. That one was. Uh... I've got a slightly different take on it, but a lot of you are probably going to disagree to part of my answer. Okay, go for it. Well, there's been, a, like, I'm not a what you would call a gun collector. I've had really expensive and nice firearms that have been so meticulous about in the past and I find myself not shooting them hardly at all because I am so meticulous of them. And most of the guns like that, I, I end up getting rid of at some point or another. What I mainly try to keep is what I would consider more of a working gun type of thing, which is I keep it clean enough to be functional for most of my guns. There's still a few that I'm really touchy about, but I keep them clean enough to be functional. And then there's some guns I just keep around for the sake of fucking having it. Like, I've got a shotgun I've had for two and a half years. It's sitting in a little metal lockbox in my closet. Oh, sorry. Anyway, i uh, got one that's in my closet, or it's in a lockbox in the closet that I've had for a while, and I think I've cleaned it once the entire time I've owned it. So... And by the way, who said watch your mouth? Did you say own it or bone it? That was Hayden was yelling for his language. Oh, I was kidding. Okay, I thought so. I was 100%. I, I thought I heard bone it or um, you said owned it, right? Uh, sorry about that. I didn't realize there was children within earshot. No. Well, way worse. Yeah, he's he's heard way, way worse. He watched, me install, he watched me install a dimmer switch one day, so he's heard way worse. <laughs> <laughs> Three-way dimmer switches are my arch nemesis, so he's heard way. Because every time I install one, I'm like, okay, there's like four different ways to wire this, so I will always wire it the wrong three ways first. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. Did we cover the insurance and everything yet? We've talked about it in general, but we haven't yeah, mentioned it. Yeah, but not as, as a... We as talked as about the videoing and the writing down of your firearm information. But the importance of insurance and why we should have it, um, or why you have insurance and why you don't have insurance if you don't have insurance. Uh, so that's going to be the question. Do you have insurance? And if you do, why do you? Uh, because uh, or do you have anything? If you do, why do you have okay, what you, you have in insurance? Because, you, know, you know, there are, there are riders, there's an umbrella, whatever you have there. But if you don't have insurance, why don't you have insurance? So we're going with Stone Guy. Okay. Yeah, I, sorry, I was muted. Um, I, I do have an umbrella policy that encompasses all that sort of stuff. Why do you think it's important? Oh, because I have... A substantial investment in my firearms. <laughs> I don't want to be whole again if I have a loss. Because shit's expensive, guys. Yep. <laughs> exactly. I just wanted to get that out in the very first answer so we don't get to answer this again. Um, Scotty. Yeah, I have a $20,000 writer on my on uh, my homeowner's insurance uh, just because I can't replace them. But I don't have to play grand to go out and buy new ones. If I had any. In a second, sorry. Yeah. Well, we can discuss, too, the differences after we're done with this with riders and Umbrella because, yeah, 
Ow. Somebody's got a writer, somebody's got an umbrella. Rob. Okay, uh... Oh, my turn. Yep. Sorry yes, sir. Okay, I just muted myself right as you said my name. <laughs> um, well, as far as just for the guns, no. Uh, it's more of like, I guess, I guess what you'd say. Damn it, Nathan bailed on me down. Uh, yes, I do have insurance, and the reason I have it is since I do not have a safe and I want to secure myself against the financial loss, uh, that is the reason I have it. I, but as I mentioned before, I do not have small children. I do not have small children uh, running around the house or teenagers running around the house. And for nine months out of the year, I do live by myself. People in the house that I do not... Uh, that I do not trust. Yeah, I'm gonna say this: you're the perfect target of that stupid gun safety ad that's been running here almost every hour on the hour. I'm getting sick and tired of hearing it on the radio. But uh, Edge, uh, what's up? And yeah, I do. Yep, I have a writer policy with. Uh, my insurance company, pretty awesome insurance company. And uh, why do I have it? Um, because, you know, for the most part, if something does happen, the house burns down, if somebody breaks in and actually steals all my guns, I can get them replaced with the exception of, you know, probably one of them that is uh, unique. Uh, but um, I have that one covered enough that I should be able to replace it with a similar model, but it won't have that, uh, that uh, you know, heirloom about, or you know, sentimental value. Sentimental value for sure that I have, uh, you know, in it right now. But uh, it's it's a great thing to have because you just don't know, unfortunately. Yeah, and um, you know, I'll and go on this once we get done. And why I brought this this topic up here is Joe's back yet? No, Yankee. What was the question again? Insurance. Yes, I have insurance. Yeah, like an uh, you have an umbrella. I know you mentioned this. Well, my umbrella doesn't cover my property. The umbrella covers your liability. My uh, homeowners covers my property, and I have a rider for fifty thousand on my gun collection on my homeowners. Very good. Is fifty gonna Ed. cover your gun collection? Yes. I, but you, it's definitely you, a nice. It looks more like fifty. Be a nice chunk to start over with, that's for sure. There'd be some guns I may not be able to replace, and they'd be expensive if I had to. Like it, my, replacing my Python is going to be hard. Replacing my Magnum carry would be hard. But most of them I can just go buy right off the shelf again at MSRP, so that's not too bad for retail. Yeah, and I'm glad Yankee brought this up because there is definitely a difference between umbrella and rider. <laughs> a lot of people think they're the same. Yeah, well, your umbrella covers more your liability, where your rider covers your property. Yeah, and there is a reason I and I, I brought this up, and I did kind of say this during what Daniel said, and there's been an ad for gun storage safety running here locally. Um, I don't know if it's a national campaign or a local campaign, but they've been running this ad where they start off with this, you know, this kid, you know, and his friend are over at the house, and they find a gun, and then they, they skip to this girl who has been being bullied and finds a gun. And then they go to this robber who breaks into your house and finds a gun. And they go into this whole spiel, and, you know, they, they go into saying why, you know, why gun safety is important, because this kid shoots, an, uh, shoots his cousin in the head by accident. This girl commits suicide, and the thief takes that gun and robs a business the next day. That's why gun safety is in, is important. And uh, so he, I know it's a little bit off topic what we're going on here with insurance, but the way they make the sound on the radio is that because you didn't have your guns properly locked up, that they're coming after you. That you're the cause of the crime. 
Yeah, exactly. Thank you. You're the cause. Of In modern the crime. liberal America, everyone's problem is your fault. Now, yes. I will say that if you leave your guns on the coffee table, unlocked, loaded, cocked, and ready to go, and a criminal breaks into your house and steals your guns, you are in no way responsible for anything that criminal does with that gun because it is not your fault that someone else chose to violate your privacy and violate the sanctity of your home and steal from you. That's not your fault. You shouldn't have to foresee that, and you shouldn't have to, to live your life in a way to prevent someone from violating you. That's a violation of you. However, if you have children in your home or something like that, and they get a hold of your guns and they kill themselves or kill a friend, that's on you. That is exactly it. Well, that's, that's the one thing that's been bugging me. Way of America these days. It's everyone else's fault except for your own. No one, yeah, no like, one accepts personal responsibility anymore, including yeah. the criminals. Right. You're responsible for that criminal breaking into your house. You're responsible for that criminal taking your firearm and going committing another crime. Well, this is just like the criminals that sued the businesses that they broke into because they got hurt while breaking into the property. It's bullshit. They shouldn't have been breaking in in the first damn place. My great uncle lost his pawn shop because these people kept breaking into the basement of his pawn shop and robbing him blind, and they could never catch him. And they kept coming in through these back windows. He put bars on the windows. They just started taking the bar. They would just come and disassemble the bars and break into the place. So he wired a car battery to the metal frame of the window one night, shocked the fuck out of one of them, and he ended up getting sued by the guy, lost his business because of it. Exactly. Yeah, but that's why this kind of ties into insurance as well, is because if they're playing this ad and they decide to come after you because your gun got stolen out of your house, and they, you know, in civil court, they find against you, you've got this insurance covering you. That's why I think umbrellas are important. Yeah, umbrellas, and I also uh, carry uh, insurance in case I ever have to use my gun. Yep. It's another reason. That's why I brought this whole whole thing up. And that commercial drives me freaking crazy. Every time I hear it, I start screaming at it that you're not responsible for the criminal. And it kind of irks me a little bit, too, that they're using this girl that's being bullied. Well... First, female suicide is normally not done by firearm. They find other ways to commit not suicide. Dramatic enough. Oh, they exactly. Hang, they want to hang themselves. Yeah. Or Actually, no, men, men hang themselves more, but they don't, women do other shit. Sorry. Men typically use violent methods where women usually use, uh, like, <laughs> passive regret or poisoning. But, um, like slit wrist. We don't have to go down that rabbit hole, you know, if we don't want to. Right. But the, the, it's, it, those are the two that drove me crazy. Yes, I agree with the first part, that that kid should never ask my shot his friend in the head. That should never happen. But the other two, or especially the, the criminal, is what was really pissing me off. So with that said, is Geo's back? No. I figured not, because I was going to ask him where he wanted to go next. Uh, we did the, the record-keeping uh, storage. Ah, yeah. Here's one I forgot. Oh, well, we, 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 did, we, did, well, we didn't get into that one you brought up earlier, but we didn't go in detail about uh, alarm systems. Well, it's not really part of you know this gun storage, but as I said, it was an important part, is having an alarm system on your well, house. Was it gun security or gun storage? Cause there gun is... storage. Alright. Okay. Yeah, it's not gun security, it's gun storage, and some of the stuff happens to be not, you know, not really deal with that topic, but it's important and it needs to be brought up, but what I was going to bring up here is traveling with your firearm storage. It's very important. Um... This will be an open discussion because not everybody here has taken their guns guns with them when they travel, but we'll leave this up to an open Why discussion. Why the hell not? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry, I just, I just had to say it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe somebody's going to Hawaii for the week and they can't take their firearms, stuff like that. Take, but, you take know, somebody's first, specifically but... going on a trip, What's what do you find like the best way to store the gun? Any advice you can give people that are 
thing about traveling the gun, um, you know, ways to do it, how to do it, um, especially through the airport, um, very important. I find up my bum. I'm just kidding. As I said, this is not a left or right. This is an open discussion, and I'm sure people have got opinions on this. Or at least Geo have thought so when he put this in the internal. What happened? Well, We're not going to go nobody, traveling with your firearms. If nobody wants to kick it off, I'll get started. I don't sure, travel. Is on the phone with DB, who's traveling with his firearms from the tactical response class. He was mostly crying because he did so poorly. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, this is it is an important topic, especially for those that haven't traveled with a you know through state lines with a firearm. You know, what do you need to do? You know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I have no clue on this. Well, I can tell you about taking my gun to the range, but other than that. I'd recommend learning the laws of everywhere you're going to be traveling through first so that you know you're not really jacked up legally. And me personally, I don't go anywhere that does uh, that will not uh, or that does not have a reciprocity and reciprocation agreement with my state for my permit. And I've thought about getting some out-of-state permits, but I just haven't really branched into that thus far, and I don't travel a whole lot other than Georgia and Tennessee anyway, which Tennessee honors my Georgia permit, so I'm good. Oh, yeah, and I don't fly. And also travel storage. Well, how do you travel? Loaded on my hip or in my pocket. <laughs> hey, what if you want to take a rifle? Can't do that. Loaded, right? I was going to say loaded in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe okay, in the back guy, seat, even. Stone Guy recently traveled to the great state of Alabama and got a suntan. Stone Guy, you there? I guess Stone Guy fell asleep on us. But anybody else, you got any suggestions, tips, uh, do's and don'ts? I do. Do carry. It's worth it. And... Do bring it with you. It's totally worth it. Airlines are pretty much used to it. Um, the little thing that you have to put it in to carry it in the airplane is you're going to have with you in the hotel and then in the rental car. So it's not like you're even bringing extra stuff. You can totally secure it no matter where you're at or what your situation is. And definitely you want to check those laws because they do change also. You, know, you want to check them right before you travel each time. I usually recommend taking that uh, Multi the traveler's guide, and then as long as you've got that with you and you're obeying the laws in it, you know you've done some amount of due diligence. You're trying to, you know, you've you've researched the laws and you're obeying them uh, as of you know January of that year. And if a change, you know, a law changed since then, at least you're doing your best to obey the laws. That is good. You know, it especially comes important, especially when you're driving. Uh, you're crossing state lines. I know the airport's pretty straightforward. I mean, all that information's there. But a lot of people get confused on traveling. To me, the most important thing to know when you travel with a gun is the same thing when you carry on a daily basis. Cover your bases, know your laws, and don't like act like an idiot. If you don't act like an idiot, you're probably never going to be confronted with the with the, even the need to know the law because you're not going to be confronted by the law, period. Because, you know, it's not like we're out looking for trouble. It's not like we're out broadcasting that we have a firearm. So... Just watch yourself. Don't like I said. Don't act like a dumbass. Very good points, sir, Yankee. Anybody else got anything on this? Get a Utah permit. That still doesn't cover you everywhere. Uh, as far as the safes that are in uh, hotel rooms, I wouldn't trust those. I can see all kinds of YouTube videos where they. You know, can get into those in no time. Well, those are easy to get into. Yeah, I just lost one I was going to bring up since nobody else has anything. Um, where was that? Storage laws. Does uh, your state have any specific storage laws? Or you know of states that have storage laws. So. <laughs> I think my state has rules about storage. I'm not sure. I know we have a thing, but because of something, we have a no uh, where we don't charge sales tax on gun safes. Anything that's gun storage related, it's tax-free. So 
Like when I went and bought this gun safe, it was like a thousand bucks, and there's no tax on it. Uh, around here, there's no laws as far as storage that I'm aware of, except for uh, you know, don't just leave it laying out in the street. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's but, a lot of storage here. Don't leave it laying in the I'll street. Get a few. I gotta go take care of something. Leave my guns laying the street if I want to. This is something we did I, not. Bring I left up. the gun laying in the street once inadvertently. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that yeah. story. I thought that was your wife's fault. It is. <clears throat> you're always supposed no. to blame your wife. You're never supposed to say you did it. Well, no, it she's was. the one who took took my black case, threw it on the hood of my car between where the where the windshield wipers are. I drove off to the gym, and as I'm driving back from the gym, I'm like, what's that black case doing in the street? That looks like a, what I keep my gun in. And I was like, holy crap, it is. <laughs> okay, who was the little girl that just giggled? Shut Scotty. up. You don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> I pictured him covering his mouth with his hands when he did that. Yeah, I was picturing Chris. I'll cover my mouth with my hands. Oh, I don't know. He... This goes to storage. The clock. Does that your wife laugh, I think? A little girl doesn't mean I am a little girl. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. I have one of those pictures here somewhere. What, you mean you're married to an Asian woman that doesn't do the little, oh, I don't know. Let me no, she's too Americanized. Oh. If I was married to an Asian woman, I'd be a much happier man. Is that Wait. true, Nathan? That, that's, that's, that's a great theory, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I, Here we go. You were married to an Asian woman. I will. Oh, there you go. Day. Is this what you're thinking about? Dana, that's what yep. he's thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> My wife is so determined that Angela Merkel goes, damn. We need to put, you need to put a caption on that picture. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your thoughts so on. Uh, I'm a second-generation Asian lover, I'm just saying. Yeah. Trigger locks or gun locks, just your, your opinion of good, bad, just a just your general opinion. Trigger locks? Yeah, like the ones you get with that are mandatory with every gun sale. You mean just like those ones you stick through the action, those big cable lock well, things? Well, hmm. some actually come with trigger locks. Like lock. Cars come with a really cheap thing. Oh, oh, you mean the ones that go like actually in the trigger guard that can have like yeah. Some lock. you know some gun companies actually give trigger guard locks. Some give cable locks. Here, just your your thoughts and opinions on them, and we'll start with uh, the main man here, Yankee. Well, they're great for long term storage, I guess, and if you don't want kids getting into them, but I would never store a gun that I might need that way. And pretty much wraps it up. <laughs> Yeah, because Gio's put this in here. I didn't know exactly what he meant by that. No, but. Trigger guards are horrible, number one. Trigger locks specifically can definitely, most kids can figure out how to, f just in the act of fiddling with them, can pull triggers. Most of the time you just rotate them and they become a cam and you can use them to, to yeah. pull triggers. There's a few of them that are very overly complicated that, well, a couple of the ones that are super complicated are easy to pull the trigger on, but very few of them can actually hold the, their their like location in space around the trigger guard so that the trigger doesn't get tr tr pulled, which isn't a big deal if you don't keep it loaded, but uh, too many people depend on something like that. I think they're more dangerous than they are worthwhile. Uh, cable lock, totally different. I think those are super useful, and I'm almost happy that a lot of companies use that when they sell them because you can use that to actually store your gun. Again, while traveling, if you put one of those you know, long cable locks, which the shackle is made out of flexible cable and it's usually longer, like a bike lock, uh, it, you can put that right through the action, you know, pull a, the, the, the slide back on an automatic and put the cable lock down through the open chamber, through the open magazine well, and then wrap the cable like around a pipe underneath the sink in the hotel or a curtain rod or underneath the seat of your car and then lock it and now it's not only disabled, but it's also locked in a place where it's hard to grab or find. But um, uh, even on a revolver, you can do something like that to physically attach it to some place that would, you know, not let somebody steal it. All right, Edge, your opinions. You're an asshole. Thank you for asking. Now, um, the trigger locks. Um, when I first started getting into it, I had uh, I first got the master lock one, the little key one. 
Then I bought the one like Gio has had a picture of with the Winchester ones with a little screw deal. Looks like a, like a, a weird key. They use them, but uh, I don't use them. Um, it may be in uh, transporting a gun or something like that or in an odd situation, but other than that, I really don't care for them. Or, uh, there's, there's other ways. I mean, I think you really, realistically, if you're keeping uh, and you know keeping your shit in check, you don't really need them. Dano, we're trying to say Stone Guy and Fidelis. Well, let's just see. Uh, the trigger lock ones are about as useful as a panty liner, and uh, the ones with the cable though are actually pretty good. I want to know how do you know how useful panty liners are? Are you using them? Well, you know, there's not a whole lot of absorbency, and from what these two guys tell me, um, you know, they, they, they don't provide a whole lot of soaking up after the fact. <laughs> well, the, the, I'll tell you, the cable lock ones, I mean, I saw, there, there's these guys that make these videos, and they don't do them to be, like, dickheads or douches or anything. They do it to show you how secure you are, and they, and they go through logs and different stuff, and they show you how to defeat them. They have, like, classes and seminars, how to defeat stuff. And they went through those like those gun locks, the wire cable ones that you get with almost any gun, and they showed them how to use like a little soda can, you know, piece of aluminum, how to pop them and and manipulate them like that. And you know, any kids, it's you know, all you kids today that wear glued to the internet, probably figure out how to I don't know how to bypass that real quick. Uh, I think I think they were really good before you know all this information came out. Before the age of the interwebs and YouTube's. All right, Nathan. Uh, in the past, I've used things like trigger locks with combos on them. Never had one of the key ones. A bad one like the combo on it. Still have that one. Uh, had one that was called the jacket that kind of clamshell folded over the gun to keep it. And I didn't really reuse that very much. I ended up giving it to my neighbor so he'd have something. Uh, but no, I, 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 and I got a ton of those little you know, locks that come with the guns. I got like a pile of them somewhere uh, to use for other things, but no, I, I pretty much either keep it in a safe or, you know, uh, keep it where it's easily accessible or whatnot, but I'm not really big on the trigger locks or the other locks just because the accessibility is limited. And, you know, they were speaking about long-term storage. I mean, my long-term storage is in the safe. Courage. What? Long term sturge. Sturge. What? Yeah. Well, what about you, Scotty? I've I've used uh, trigger locks in the past. Um, I think once you get past like three or four firearms, just get a cheap safe, and then you're better off. Um, once you get past you know maybe eight or ten firearms, get a damn good safe. Because a trigger arm, a trigger a trigger guard. Ain't that great? Um, but it, it does keep the firing pin from touching the primer, so I mean it is effective to a point. Um, I mean it, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it does it does what it's intended to do. So, but I mean once you get a certain number of firearms, you know, just get a, a cheap you know snap on cheap sheet metal safe, and if you get more than you know maybe six or eight. You know, go get a good safe. Get yeah, a, that's gonna, That's actually my my last question there. I'm gonna save it for last year, but which is coming up because this is the last second to last question I have for tonight. But Stone Guy, who has fallen asleep, so he should me, I'm gonna right say right. that I don't like them. Um, personally, I mean, they, I can find them effective for a very short period of time, but. Uh, you haven't seen this video yet, and it's coming out. But I was just curious how strong these, you know, cable locks really were. And it took three hits of my Warhammer, and I took it inside because I didn't break it open quite. But all I had to do was pry a teeny little piece of plastic off, and the locks open. And that's you know you don't even need freaking bolt cutters. I mean, a hammer you can get into these locks pretty damn quickly. But it is a Warhammer. It is a Warhammer, but I'm just saying with just a regular, yeah. you know, 16-ounce framing hammer, you can get one of these locks pretty damn quick. 
Well, I don't think these locks are ever intended for somebody to use tools against them. They're they're intended to keep somebody with their hand strength from being able to get get access to them. Sure. More of a safety rather than an anti-theft device, I would think. Exactly. They're intended against sure. children getting them and shooting themselves with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I'm getting here. They're not a deterrent. A thief steals steals a gun with a cable lock on it. Well, if they don't have, a, you know, a pair of bolt cutters to go through that cable, they can use the next best thing and use a hammer. Oh, they don't even have a pair it, of bolt It's 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 kind of like my old. I used to have one of those old sheet metal stack on safes before I got my big one. And the point of the stack on safe is somebody goes, "Oh, you think that'll keep people from stealing them?" And I said, "No, it's to keep my kids away from getting them." And they go, well, wouldn't it keep someone from stealing it? I go, well, the stack on safe in my garage, I keep a three-foot crowbar leaned against it because that just happens to be where the crowbar is. <laughs> uh, anyone with any brain could pick it up and go, kink, kink, yep. and be in it. Uh, this is a, this going to be the last question for tonight, so at least on this topic. Um, and it's very important because it hasn't been discussed. Cost of gun storage, you know. Oh, can I just say... Thing yeah. Before we leave lock. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Joe. What do you have? I just want to say because we're talking about gun locks, I think they're horrible for lots and lots of reasons, but mainly because they're legislated to exist. Mandatory. So, mandatory. So the reason that they're so cheap, like you were saying, that they can come apart, is because they're, uh, you know, they don't want to uh, reduce the quality of the firearm, and they don't want to raise the price, so they get the cheapest possible lock they can possibly get. But they're wor they're bad in lots of re other reasons. Uh, the fact that we ever gave in to them just drives me nuts. We as gun owners gave in to that. It drives me nuts because one, it 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 lets parents get off by saying it's the guns that are bad or the gun owners that are bad because that's what they're really saying. Because the guns themselves have to be locked because I'm not going to take responsibility for training my own child to stay away from a hot stove or a moving car or a moving bus. Oh wait, they do teach them to stay away from all those other dangerous things. But they don't want to take the responsibility to tell them to stay away from firearms. Instead, they, you know, they, the government, society, whatever, puts the responsibility on us as gun owners to keep our dangerous guns safe from children. That's bullshit. It's the children that should be getting trained to stay away from our dangerous guns or any dangerous gun that they might see or any dangerous item they might see. But it also tells them uh, by putting on, or when we allowed them to let us put gun locks on our guns, it also in my opinion, makes us marginalized, like if we're all bad. And like the thing that's keeping our angry selves away from using our murderous weapons to kill each other every time we get mad is the fact that some, uh, you know, angel from government told us we had to keep a gun on there or a lock on our trigger. It's just ridiculous to think that by putting a lock on something that it's somehow going to stop us from just using this thing, you know, on our whims to kill each other, which is what they believe. And I think that by letting into that in the first place, it was almost given in to that or letting them feel satisfied that they, you know, uh, saved us somehow or, or somehow bettered society with that horrible step in no direction, a thing that we all know realistically does nothing, but it's like a, it was like a emotional victory for them or a, whatever they call that, like a you know, victory for them, even though it really wasn't a victory for anybody. I'm going to agree and disagree with GWEBS partially. I agree that this should not be anything legislative, and there's no reason to think that, you know, like he's saying that. Oh, if you don't tell them, if we don't make them do the right thing, they won't do the right thing. But I will disagree slightly. I'll put on my uh, uh, psychology hat here and say, you know, since that is my degree, uh, you can't train a small child to not make mistakes. So don't trust your child to not make a mistake. Do take precautions if you have children in the house. Oh, right, right. And I'm not suggesting that you'd leave guns laying around and it's the kids' fault. I'm just saying that if we give them the status, you know, say, oh, yeah, you're right, we better keep guns locked up because they're the dangerous thing in society. But, yeah. Yankee, that's also why small children should not be left alone. Yeah. Well, they, you know, we don't mandate that you put those little plugs on your uh, electric outlets. We don't mandate that you put uh, locks on your poisons, you know. Those are all important things that a smart parent would do, but there's not laws about them like there is with fire. Because the parent's supposed to be watching that small child 24-7 so they don't drink the poison. It's not even just small children. It's children, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9 years old. <clears throat> test after test after test proves even the most well-trained children. Like they took those children of, you know, trained in RA instructors, took them out on the playground, and then buried rifles in the dirt, and all the little kids played with them. You know, the crickets, and you know, and everything. 
pointed them at each other, played games with them, everything, even though they were the, tr- the children of NRA instructors who knew better. Children make mistakes. Don't trust the child's life that. to your own ego. That's completely correct. Children are children. Um, when, when I take my son to a gun shop, you know, I've been fitting him for a rifle and, you know, uh, an SR, uh, or uh, sorry, a Ruger uh, 1022 is too long for him at this point. But an, uh, a, I call it an AR 22 with the uh, adjustable stock is correct for him. And I've been fitting him, you know, trying to get the right size for him. You know, trying to keep his finger off the trigger. It's impossible. He's seven years old. He doesn't. At, at seven years old, they don't know. Keep your finger off the trigger. No matter how much I've worked with him on that, keeping the finger off the trigger of a firearm, you know, there, there's nothing that's going to keep that from happening. And no matter how much you work with them, um, you just have to, to to know that they are still children at certain ages, and they can't be completely trusted the way that a, an adult is. Which is why the parent, who should be able to be trusted, should be watching 24-7. You can't. Which you can't. Child, you can't. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, and again, nobody's suggesting that kids and firearms should just, you know, the guns should be buried in the sand on playgrounds, but what, we're, what I'm saying is that <laughs> We don't go, we don't scorn all car owners because they don't put extra locks on their car doors when they have kids. We don't scorn anyone who owns a sharp knife, you know that that they don't put rubber warning labels. Don't stab your people with this knife on their sharp knives. But it's guns, you know, again, guns are so bad that they're the individual villain in the home. They need to have an extra layer of protection. Um, you can't just be a, a civilized. But I, I mean, uh, I can also parent. see that you know if a kid picks up a a knife, chances are he's not going to hurt himself with it. If, if a kid picks up a gun, the chances are greater that he's going to hurt himself or someone else with it. We can't, they're not equal potential deadliness. You know what I'm saying? I'm not so, so what? I didn't say either one of them was. I didn't, I didn't go near that. I said that we don't score knife owners by saying that you need to do special warnings. You have to go beyond and above, and there's laws that make it so that you, every time you buy a knife, it has to have an extra safety warning because you as a knife owner can't be trusted around children. Yeah. And that's what they're saying with the gun owner stuff. That's all I was saying is that I think that it was a loss on our end to, to allow them to say that guns are so dangerous that they need this extra thing, or that gun owners are so irresponsible that every time someone buys a gun, they have to have this extra warning. It's just that... that, that, few things new, that get parents, that. new parents are irresponsible, and that's where a lot of it comes from, irresponsible parents. Yeah. The court had a good one for how much we're willing to spend on security, right? Yeah, exactly. It's how much are you willing to, to spend? I mean, how much does it influence your purchase? Because you can, I was going to say this out loud, because you or say this uh, up, up front, excuse me. Because some safes, you can buy two or three guns for the cost of that safe. So okay, how much so does then. that influence you? I think uh, who brought it up earlier when you have so many by this level when you have so many more by this level. Scotty. Scotty. So that was a good way of doing it, I think, because that's how most people progress into it naturally. I think one of the best things I've seen uh, to make kind of a self-realization thing is just go add up your guns. We've already talked about having a list for insurance. As soon as you look at that list and your safe is like, you know, a portion, you know, a fraction of a percent of what you're actually putting in it. I mean, are you going to spend five hundred dollars to to protect, you know, twenty thousand dollars worth of stuff? Yeah, I mean, is, is that uh, sheet, you know, that sheet metal cabinet they use to lock up your guns? Oh, uh, you got, you know, ten thousand dollars worth of guns in there. You paid a hundred dollars for that safe. Yeah, isn't it worth a couple extra bucks to make sure that that ten thousand dollars worth of stuff is going to be there when you get home? Yep, I mean, you get your insurance. It's still that better option. So so what would be a viable option for two thousand dollars for the guns? It comes down to you. You gotta look what you need for storage. That can be a tough one. I mean that could be a gun. That could literally be a rifle, right? That right. could be a fancy AR. That, that could, could be, be five uh, guns like twenty five normal handguns, you know, inexpensive handguns. I mean that could be a lot of guns. Yeah, that could be a whole shitload of Jennings. I just think there's there's a lot of people that fit in that lower category that don't necessarily have a large number of guns. They have either exactly. one really nice gun 
or a few handguns. You know, the solution to that... why they have so many different types of security systems. With them. Well, the answer to that is buy more guns. Yeah, just buy more guns. <laughs> That's really the only That's rational the answer, exactly. Yeah. Then, you're, then you're obligated to buy a fancier safe. Yeah. You bought that $800 safe, and you're only keeping $100 worth of guns, well, $100 gun in there. Well, yeah. fill it up. No, the kind like you know, the big box, the safes you can buy at the big box stores are well under a grand. They barely get up to 500 bucks because they're, they're making them fairly inexpensively. So if you're dealing with, you know, let's just say five or six guns, you know, around that price point you're talking about, Dana, then you're, you know, you're paying a couple of hundred dollars to secure that. That's probably worth it because, again, you, you're not filling it. You, know, you're not, you, know, you don't need the whole capacity of it, so that means you can put, you know, your stamp collection or, you know, stuff that you might put in a, a social security box or whatever. So you might, or what do they call those things? Uh, the, well, you know, the, the box at the bank. And thimble lines. Deposit box. Deposit box. Deposit box. Before you go off, what sense, uh, Thimble I got in here at the out. very end of this chat. He doesn't get I'm away. sorry, I was out. He's just running. I thought you had it blocked chat. at 13 and under. <laughs> I do, but he's he's running the after chat. So everybody knows. That's oh, no, really? Because I was doing chat. the after chat, so I didn't realize that he was. Yeah, was just How does the blue line? Keep oh, do you have? You were actually running an after chat. He makes well, I didn't do it before I mean, because nobody ever shows up to the ones before, so I thought I'd I do can it. run an after chat. I'll, I just won't be there the whole time. I, I'll just leave my computer. No, you're fucked. Bye. No, too late. Geo said he's gonna run it, so All you're right, fine with me. You have full seniority on you. He's running it. It's yep. fine with me. I'm not. I wasn't gonna run it, and then Cork suggested, it, and I was like, "Well, I'll just leave my computer running." Now he's gonna it's insubordinate for him to keep insisting on running one, even though I said it was <laughs> Well, Tino, you also seem to be going behind the back door every time in regards to these things. I just said, if you guys need someone to run I've an after chat, let me know. Back door and, in regards to, you know, well, I just want to say this in, in closing: safes are important. Keeping your guns safe are important. And I want to thank everybody for watching, everybody that came out here and contributed, except Thin Blue Line, who didn't contribute. And saw Badge's channel. I told you I was there. Badge, you don't count. You're just uh, sausage fingers on a screen. It's better than a sausage body, like a freaking sausage center for lunch. Look! <laughs> and those that want to be able to rewatch us later that may have missed part of this, uh, in a day or two, this will be up on my main account. So... Just wait for it then. You'll be able to see it. And if Geo Loves Deems is appropriate enough, you may even make it into a podcast. Uh, thanks, everybody, again, and thanks for watching. And Geo Loves is running the after chat.